Well, even during the pandemic, gun sales in America have been breaking records. But get this, new analysis shows that background checks have also hit new highs, including people who have been stopped from buying guns. A record number, in fact, nearly twice as many gun sales were blocked in 2020 as in the year before. We're joined now by Peter Ambler. He serves as the executive director of Giffords Courage to Fight Gun Violence, which he co-founded with former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, who survived, of course, that assassination attempt back in 2011, and her husband, now a U.S. Senator, Captain Mark Kelly. Thanks for being with us tonight, sir. We appreciate it. You bet. Thanks for having me. Let me back up to kind of the, the root issue here. Why do you think, as a country, we saw such a surge in gun sales, even during the pandemic for all of 2020 and right into this year as well? That's an excellent question. Nobody has answered definitively. Um, certainly fear of the unknown, uh, aggressive marketing from the gun lobby. And, you know, like we see this time and time again, scare tactics from the NRA. Um, you know, Joe Biden's getting elected president. He's going to come take your guns. We've heard that story before with Hillary Clinton, with Barack Obama, with Bill Clinton. Um, and of course, uh, you know, uh, um, law abiding Americans who want to own guns for whatever they'd like to do with them can still. The problem, of course, is what we're here to discuss, which um, is, you know, unauthorized individuals attempting to buy guns. And I'm sure from your perspective here, hearing about a surge in sales is the exact opposite of what you probably would like to hear. But again, one of the news pegs here, the interesting is that 300,000 people were stopped from buying a gun last year because of those background checks. Are you at least encouraged, if that's the right word, that the system is catching more people and stopping them from getting a firearm? Well, I think an American should be encouraged by the fact that the background check system works, right? Um, when it's employed at our nation's federally licensed uh, gun dealers, when somebody who's prohibited from buying a gun, um, you know, 300,000 individuals last year, if they go, they attempt to buy a gun, the system works as it's intended and it stops them. Um, what should terrify all of us is the fact that, you know, roughly 20% of transactions um, uh, happen without a background check. And they go through these like gaping loopholes in the background check system. You can go to a gun show, you can go online, um, you can buy a gun from anyone who is not a federal firearms licensee in many, many states and do that legally without a background check. So what we should all be asking ourselves is what happens after these 300,000 people fail a background check? How many of them are then going through the side door and attempting to circumvent the uh, federal firearms uh, background check system. And that's an incredibly important and, and frightening point. Thank you for saying that. And just remind people who may not understand the system, who exactly gets stopped? What are the red flags that come up that would uh, allow a person then to be denied sale of a firearm? Yeah, well, you know, there are a number of uh, disqualifying factors that operate at both the federal and the state levels. Um, uh, you know, if you look at the stats from last year, 42% of all of all denials were felonies. But um, in addition to that, you see um, people who um, were prohibited because of red flag laws. That means that these are individuals who are in such crisis that a family member or a law enforcement official went to court to temporarily restrain their access to a gun. Uh, likewise, somebody could be prohibited because of a domestic violence misdemeanor. Um, you know, firearms and um, gun violence form a very deadly, deadly nexus. Uh, you know, um, a, a woman who's abused by an individual who has access to a firearm is 500% more likely to die than an individual who's abused by somebody who doesn't have access to a gun. So these are life and death questions. This, these um, scenarios where, you know, does it, somebody who is, um, you know, legally prohibited from having a gun, are they able to get one ultimately because we allow these gaping loopholes in the background check system is really a life and death matter. And we know that you know, states that have gone beyond the federal standard, roughly half of the American population is covered at this point by universal background check, that those states are safer. They have less gun violence. So we know that these laws work. Um, but, you know, sadly, we haven't seen enough action in Washington. Congress has not moved fast enough to pass universal background checks, which would give the entire country this layer of protection. 
And let me ask you this before we go. There are some states now uh, that are kind of rolling back requirements for background checks and uh, taking other measures to kind of make it easier, like not requiring training. Uh, there's a bill stalled in the Senate right now, as you said, to strengthen uh, background checks in the country. We, we are, are a nation of mass shootings and gun violence for years and years. What is your understanding of why the folks in D.C. can make no traction on this issue, particularly at a time now when the NRA has been so weakened and is in disarray? Well, I, I think you're right to point your finger squarely at the, the folks in D.C., right? Um, this is an issue that unifies America. Um, you know, several years ago and, you know, decades previous, you know, people thought of, you know, gun safety as a somewhat controversial topic. That's no longer the case. Over 90 percent of Americans support universal background checks. Um, the only other things that have levels of support like that are literally ice cream and free money. So you're, you're, t you're talking about, you know, a problem um, that, you know, leads to the death of 40,000 Americans every year. Um, 150,000 are shot, you know, millions more affected in various ways. You're talking about a law that would be effective at reducing gun violence. And you're talking about a bill that has massive support from the public. So you're absolutely right um, that, you know, we, we, we should be pointing our fingers at, at, at Congress, at Republicans in the Senate. They need to come to the table. They need an answer for, for gun violence. Uh, currently, they, they don't. Um, rolling back you know, requirements on licenses, requiring less training, uh, less instruction. This will lead to more gun violence, not less. The uh, research bears that out. And, you know, we're at a point in this country when we have to decide, um, are we simply going to arm ourselves against each other, which will lead to more violence? Or are we going to pass legislation, universal background checks that's supported by 90 percent of Americans and it's going to save tens of thousands of lives? I could talk about this issue uh all night and certainly a lot of cynics out there that say if nothing changed after Newtown, maybe things will never change. But certainly we know you're in the fight and we'll keep pushing. Thanks for giving us a few minutes tonight. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care.